Hi everyone. Can people hear me? If you can, would you mind just saying in the chat, writing in the chat, whether or not you can hear us. We're just uh, getting our system set up here. We want to make sure that everything is a go. We see we've got quite a few people just signing in, so we're slowly getting going. We're not quite at the top of the hour, but we will be shortly. So if we can have a, a little indicator, if you guys can hear us okay, and are we getting any comments in people? We've, I'm, I'm Val Lawton, and I'm an artist and illustrator, and I'm coming to you today from the Bateman Foundation, the, uh, the Gallery of Nature. We're located in Victoria, BC, and I've got with me Duncan. Say hi, Duncan. Hello, hello. Duncan is my moderator, and I've got Jeff. Say hi, Jeff. Hello. <laughs> Jeff is my producer. So among the three of us, we'll see how think we're going to make this uh, really great hour, and uh, we're going to make sure that everybody's able to see what we're doing and hear what's going on. For those of you who have been with me before, it's a slightly different setup today. We're streaming live to YouTube, so we're not going to have the ability to sort of um, interact as much. So, but if you want to say something, please just write in the chat, and we'll we'll deal with it there, and we'll try to deal with your questions. Have we heard anything, Duncan? Is there anybody? Uh, we're getting some positive feedback. People are giving the thumbs up in the chat. Yeah. So great. I see, I see a few people have commented. Uh, we have. Someone from St. Paul, Minnesota. Oh, wow. Chat. Don't know. Excellent. Yeah, London, Ontario. Great. Well, that was my next yeah. question. Can you let me, can you write in the chat where you're coming in from? I was figuring we get people from across Canada, but that's really great to hear. We've got some uh, people coming in from south of the border as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. Magnus is here. Magnus. Hi, Magnus from class. It's lovely to see you again. <laughs> that's so great. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we still have people coming in, so I'll repeat myself just a little bit. I am Val Lawton, and I'm an artist illustrator, and I'm coming to you from the Gallery of Nature, the Bateman Gallery of Nature, which is located on the Inner Harbour here in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, on the west coast of Canada. Our little harbour here is one of the busier harbours in Canada. We have float planes and the, the coho is coming in and we have all sorts of activity going on just outside here and it's, uh, it's a beautiful day. So the Gallery of Nature is run by the Bateman Foundation and I wanted to show you a little bit about the founder of the Bateman Foundation. So if I could have the PowerPoint presentation, please, Jeff. And you are going to be looking at, there's our introductory page. Here is the man of the hour. This is our founder, Robert Bateman, and he is one of Canada's foremost and I would say iconic artists. And he's also a conservationist and a naturalist. He's 90 year, 91 years young, and he still paints or sketches every day. So right from the get-go, Robert sketched outdoors as a kid. Like he, he, would, he grew up in Ontario, in southern Ontario, in Toronto, and he would sketch outdoors right from a very young age. Uh, he would, using just a, a sketch pad and a paper, a pen, paper and a pen, uh, sketch birds in the neighborhood and got very, very interested in um, uh, nature. So it, this has led to a very deep understanding and appreciation for nature. So his work, and we will take a look at a few of his pieces today, features wildlife in its natural habitat. And again, I will talk a little bit about that when we look at each individual piece. So I just wanted to uh, acknowledge that we are coming to you from the traditional lands of the Songhees and the Esquimalt First Nations here in Victoria, and for which we're extremely grateful. And today we are here for our first free online family nature sketch. And we're going to be doing a portrait of a polar bear. Here's what we have here. This is, for, the, for those of you who have been in my classes before, we've been doing weekly classes every month with kids from across Canada. And we cover an animal, we talk about those animals, uh, and then we learn how to sketch them. So every day, we, every uh, Saturday, we'll talk about the animal we're doing, and I like to give you the, the scientific name. So the name of the polar bear is Ursus maritimus. You can say maritimus or maritimus, but I gather that the correct pronunciation is maritimus. And we are going to work on capturing the shape of our bear, and we also want to if we have time, we'll start working on how we make our bear's fur look real. Um, before we get too far along, I also wanted to give a shout out to Alyssa with Polar Bears International and to Jesse with the Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants group. They were very helpful in helping to uh, promote this event today. 
This event is also um, sort of um, priming you for what we're going to be doing in January. We have uh, themed months and January is going to be exploring the Arctic and we're going to be talking with the polar bear again in January. We'll do a little bit different uh, a different approach to drawing our polar bear, but uh, we'll be doing the polar bear, the arctic wolf, and the reindeer. Those are the three animals we will be looking at in the month of January. And if you're interested in joining us, uh, you can check us out at thebatemanfoundation.org and click on the learning link. Okay, so I always like to get started, as some of you will know, I like to get started with our interesting facts about our animal. So let's get going. And we know that the, the polar bear, the Ursus meridimus, is the largest bear in the world. And they can be absolutely huge. They can weigh between eight and 1300 pounds. And I'm referring to the boar here. The boar, the boar is the name for a male polar bear. Uh, sow is the name for a female polar bear. So the, the male bear, the boar, can weigh anywhere between eight and 1300 pounds, which is absolutely enormous. Same with the length, very, very long. And when they stand, you know, six feet in height, six to nine feet in height, quite large creatures. Um, they are, the range of the polar bear is the, um, the Arctic Circle, but you will find them as far south as, um, as Newfoundland. They can smell prey up to an hour away, up to a kilometer away, which is really fascinating. They have a, such a strong sense of smell, which they use to find seal breathing holes in the ice. So once uh, a bear has, has found a hole, it will wait patiently until a seal comes up for, for air, and then it will grab it. So it's, um, it, and it can even detect a seal in the water underneath compacted, up to up, like about a meter's worth of compacted snow. So their sense of smell is pretty powerful. They can swim steadily for days at a time, which is absolutely fascinating. There, there has been one recorded uh, a trip, a journey of a sow, a female polar bear, who swam continuously, continuously for nine days. Now she lost something like 20 to 22% of her body weight, but it was a continuous swim. Like when I use the word continuously, I mean she did not stop. There was no, wasn't uh, taking a break at any point. It was nonstop. So when a bear swims, they are quite wonderful swimmers. They can sustain a pace of up to six miles per hour, which is pretty considerable. And thanks to a thick layer of body fat and uh, a water repellent coat, that insulates them really beautifully from both cold air and really cold water. Now they're huge paws. They have these enormous paws. I think that's my next thing. Yes, my next point is the paws are the size of dinner plates. So about 30 centimeters wide. So these big paws not only help them swim tremendously, but it also helps when they're walking on, on snow and on ice, it helps them to distribute their weight. So this is very helpful. The paws of a, of a polar bear are much larger than those you would find in any other of the Ursidae family. The Ursidae family are the other bears, like uh, the, the grizzly, the American bear, uh, the black bear. Those, so they, they are, the polar bear is, a, is a quite a different shaped bear than the others of its family. Polar bear skin is black. Now I found that really interesting. Um, one of the reasons is that it helps them absorb the sunlight and to retain, to retain heat in their skin. Another very interesting tip is that the fur is actually translucent. So it's not white. The polar bear fur isn't white. It is actually invisible. It's actually clear. And one last point I thought was fascinating is they have blue tongues. Now we will not be getting a chance to look at the blue tongues today because this of course we're working with pencil. So we're going to be working in black and white so you won't have an opportunity to use any blue on your, uh, your polar bear's tongues. Okay, I would like to do oh a few more things I always like to cover. The polar bear is also known by a few other names. He's known as the white bear. Nanook, the sea bear, hence the name Ursus meridimus, the, and the ice bear, and the great white northern bear. One other interesting fact about the uh, polar bear is it is the only bear, it's the only uh, creature in that family to be classified as a maritime animal because it spends so much time on or in water. So that, that's another difference between the polar bear and the uh, other members of the Ursidae family. So I'd like to take a look at some of Robert Bateman's paintings 
of the polar bear. He's got quite a few, so I selected just a few for us to see. Um, we will take a look at a few. And again, remember I mentioned how Robert Bateman really likes to put its creature, its, whatever animal he's doing, in its ecosystem, in its environment. So we can see not only the creature, but the environment that it lives in. So here we have a, a bear. This one is called global warming. And this is very much like the sow I just mentioned. She's swimming and swimming and swimming for kilo many kilometers at a time. That's a beautiful painting. Here we have long light. And that's a, a polar bear sitting on, on, on a glacier. Polar bears at Baffin Island. Again, we get a very good sense of the uh, where the animal lives and how, where you know the surroundings that the in, uh, the animal finds itself in. Again, looking at the fur, you think you, you sort of think that a polar bear is white, but depending on the quality of light, depending on the uh, the uh, if the bear has been rolling in something, or even as the bear grows older, the the quality the the color the coloring of the fur tends to change. They get a little yellower as they grow older. Um, and so when we look at these paintings, especially the color paintings of Robert Bateman's, you can see that you can get a good sense of, of maybe how old the bear is. Here's a black and white of a polar bear walking towards us. And this is one of his iconic polar bear uh, profiles. This is, this is called polar bear profile. And you get a wonderful sense of um, the, the fur. You can almost, almost feel what, what it would look like to sink your fingers into the, into the neck of this polar bear. I, I wouldn't advise it, but it really is quite, it's really quite beautifully done. And Robert Bateman does not make sure to paint every single strand of fur. He, is, he works in a, more, a slightly more abstract way to create the appearance of, of fur. So that is um, uh, one of the artistic tools that is very important. Here we have um, a black and white image of a polar bear, and he's swimming towards us. And also part of that family is this image that we're going to be working from today. This is from what's called the Predator Profile. This is, um, a Robert Bateman did a series of predator profiles. There's this one, the polar bears, there's the cougars. Um, do you guys remember any of the other predator profiles? There's a few other um, animals that are known as predators that Robert Bateman has done um, um, uh, uh, portraits of. So this is a really beautiful example of the polar bear. So I would like you to take a look at, I'm going to get you to give me the overhead camera now, please, Jeff. The, this is the image we're working from. Um, I have taken that image and created uh, a series of, of shapes around it. These are what we call composite shapes. And I have laid them on top of our polar bear. And this is going to be a great way for us to understand the shape of our bear. And how does he fit? How does the, what, how does the nose compare to the ear? And um, how everything fits in nicely. Again, these are called composite shapes. So I want to take a look at that, and I've taken, in this image here, I've taken away the polar bear itself, and I'm just, we're just looking at the composite shapes, and this is how we're going to get started. Now, I don't know if some of you were able to print off these images. I'm going to keep this nearby so you can see it. You can certainly work alongside with me. And we're going to get started. Let's get our pencils and everything ready. I've got my, my collection here. I've got my pencils. I've got a couple of erasers. I've got my trusty little, um, it's just like a little paintbrush when I, when I use my eraser and I just move off the crumbs. And I'm sure you'll be seeing me do that in a second. I've also got my pencil sharpener handy, plus one of my favorite notebooks, one of my favorite sketchbooks. So let's get started. Everybody got a nice sharp pencil. And I'm gonna tell you something that I, I will probably say a few times over the next, <laughs> next half hour or so is when you get started drawing your composite shapes, don't press too hard. I don't want you to press too hard because we're going to go in, we're going to create these shapes and then we're gonna build our bear around it. And then we're gonna go in and erase those, those shapes that we have created. Some artists refer to it as um, scaffolding. Creating these shapes is like creating a scaffold that we kind of we kind of hang our bear on. So we don't want to see that scaffold when we're finished, but we do want them to. We do need it to start our bear. So looking at my my uh, series of shapes here, I think I want to start with this shape. This is a lovely oval, nice oval shape, and everything else is going to be hanging on onto that oval. So that's kind of our central shape here. So let's get started with that. I'm going to draw my oval here, and I'm just going to 
freehand it. You can't, very few people can just go in and draw a perfect oval. You want to take your time doing it. I want to do it, I know that one end is going to be right about here and maybe another end right about here. And I'm just going to kind of gently draw these lines and I'm not pressing too hard, remember? Don't press too hard. I'll say that a few times more. Just drawing a nice gentle oval. Can you guys see this okay? Duncan and Jeff, does that look up nice and clear on the screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we've got my nice oval shape there. Has there been any a chat? Has anyone else been telling us where they're coming from? Well, we certainly have uh, a wide range of people. Great. Uh, as far as Victoria, uh, <laughs> I saw someone from Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> now we're teasing. There's uh, Sue from Philadelphia, which is quite yep. far away. Welcome, uh, Sue. We have uh, Richmond. We have the Yukon, Vernon, Tampa, Florida. Wow. So quite a Quite a range. Quite a sure. range. Well, and, welcome uh, everyone. Yeah. A lot, a lot of positive feedback about Great. the facts. So. Great. Great. So there we have our first shape. And everything, as I mentioned, everything's going to kind of hang off this shape. Now, when you've done that, when you're happy with it, and take your time. Because this is, you don't want to rush it. You do you do want your shape to be um, as, as close to the shape that you've got here. It doesn't have to be the same size, but I'd like it to be that approximate, uh, those dimensions. So when you have done that, then we're going to draw that, that, that X and the Y axis going through our oval. It's almost like it's making it into a, a pizza pie shape. So I'm going to draw an X axis here from one end across to the other. I'm not pressing too hard. Remember, don't press too hard. <laughs> I'll say that a few more times. So I've got my X axis here. And then the Y axis is going to come down right through the middle here. So the point of making this axis, almost like crosshairs, is you're able to you're able to really clarify where the eye sits and where the the mouth sits and where the snout fits it makes it that much easier if you just had your oval you might think that the eye was over in this area here when in fact you know that we have that y axis we actually know that the eye is really on this side of the axis but without it you may have thought it was over here Anyway, we'll get to that in, in a minute or two. We have a few more shapes we need to draw. We've got our main oval for the head, our axis here, X and Y axis to, to split that in two. And then we have, I think we'll take a look at this one here. I've drawn a circle around what is essentially kind of the snout of, of our bear. It, it covers a pretty large area of his face. Now, he is sort of tipping his head towards us a little bit. It's not straight on. We're not looking at him straight on, nor is it a complete, absolute profile. But his head is tipped a little bit before us, uh, a little bit towards us. So this area here is not a perfect circle. It's more of an oval shape. And look how I've butted that circle, that oval shape, right up against the oval that we've already drawn there. So let's draw another oval. And we know that the, the end of that oval goes to right about there on that, that x-axis. goes right to about there. And you can see on your, on your composite shapes that there's just a little space there. You're keeping that in mind. All these shapes and spaces are relative to one another. So that's the, it's the relativity of the shapes that we're really, that's really giving us a, a leg up here and getting the right, putting them all together will give you the right shape of our, the foundation of our polar bear. So I've got my little mark there. And I'm going to move around here with my pencil, not drawing, not pressing too hard. I'm going to move around into this area here. And it goes right up against the edge of my, that end of the um, oval. Same at the bottom. We're trying to get a nice oval shape in here. It goes, it goes pretty tightly to the end of the, to the end of our initial oval. So there we have an approximate, I went a little bit far out of my area here. I'm just going to erase that lightly and now you're going to see my little paintbrush in action here. Getting rid of some of those. I find I like using that rather than my hand because sometimes it made my hand will be a little bit, a little bit damp or something. So I, I like to use, I like to use my, this little brush where it's nice and dry and it gets rid of those eraser crumbs. So I've got kind of an oval shape here, which represents the snout. And inside that snout, we have the very end. And that very end represents the, uh, covers the area 
where the where the uh, nose resides. So we're just going to make a little circle here to cover the area where the nose sits. So let's do that. And again, we can take a look at where that circle exists relative to the, the x-axis, to the other ovals that we've created, and it goes outside of the, a little bit outside of those, those shapes. Yeah, so that, you know what, uh, it's a great job so far. We're monitoring things on our end, it's pretty clear. Kimberly uh, from Brand Connection mentioned that it's a little hard to see, so I know that these are, hard to see? are okay. very light lines. And okay. Uh, we want to keep them okay. light so that we can erase it. All right, thank you, Kimberly. I will draw a little bit harder just so that you can see me better, but I want you all to not press too hard. So I, thank you, Kimberly. I'm gonna make these a little bit darker so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. A Little bit darker. There we go. So we've got one, two, three shapes in there so far, not including our X and Y axis. And I'm going to be, how does that, Kimberly? Does, does that look a little bit better? See that a bit better? One other thing that I'll, I'll recommend is if you are able to stream in 1080, it definitely helps. And the, the bigger screen, the better. I know cell phones are fun to watch YouTube on, but if you can <laughs> put that up on the television, you'll have the best, best image. So. You could watch this on your cell phone, could you? Definitely. I can. guess you could, yeah. Okay, so I've got my one, two, three shapes in there. Let's take a look at where the ear resides. The ear, I've got, it's just a nice perfect circle for the ear and that it sits above the x-axis there. You see that? It sits above that and there's a little tiny bit of a, there's a little bit of our oval that, that uh, is, is left, the, 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 the gap between the x-axis and the bottom of that ear circle and I'm just going to draw it very light, oh, I'll do it a little bit harder, draw a circle in here. And again, nobody can draw a perfect circle. No one can do it. And someone might say they can, but you can. very few people can draw a perfect circle just like this. You have to take your time, you know, do a few takes, do a few rounds at it. There. I think that looks a bit darker. I, I like the looks of that one. So we've got our one, two, three, four shapes right now, plus our, um, our X and Y axis. And that's really going to help position our eye and our mouth when we get to that. The last shape, and let me know if I'm going too quickly. Just uh, pipe up in the chat if you have uh, any comments you think I'm going too fast. The next shape we're going to work on is essentially the neck, and it is uh, just a big kind of a, kind of a square. Now, the, it's a little bit cut off, but we know that that comes over to the edge. Here. We're just going to know that that line from the, uh, the box does meet down in the corner. You don't need to include that because our polar bear portrait does end right about there. So let's have a go at that. We know that, that um, the top side of our box goes from just underneath the ear, and I know that because I'm looking at my composite shapes here, it goes just beneath the ear. I'm going to make a little mark there. It comes over the top of that x-axis, and it goes down into this area here. And it, this is where you, you don't have as much um, uh, you, it's not quite as relative. It's a little, little more free form here. You have to kind of eyeball where you think the edge of your, your um, uh, box is going to be. So I think it's, I, I'm thinking it comes down to about here. What you could do is taking a look at this and using your pencil, kind of take a little, take a little note of where, if you just held a, uh, your pencil up and did a, uh, made, held it parallel to the Y axis, you could see that it, com it cuts through that um, the, the circle, the oval that we've created for the snout, it goes to right to about here. So if I were to draw a straight line from the corner of my box, right up through, it would cut right through to about there. So that's something that would help you kind of position the edge of, the, the edge of that neck. You don't want your neck to be too narrow. You want to give the, the polar bear ample space for its neck because it's, of course, it's a very solid part of his anatomy. So let's make sure that it's deep enough, that it's wide enough. Okay, having done that, I'm going to go in here and take a look at approximately where that line will go up to. And I'm going to say it's right about there. And I think I had it about right, that the edge of that, that box. That's the upper right-hand corner. That's the right-hand corner of our box. So I want to draw a line from here, from in just inside that ear to down here. Now I'm not going to draw, it won't be a perfectly straight line because I'm not using a ruler. I didn't ask you to bring a ruler. If you have one, you're certainly welcome to use them, but I'm just going to eyeball it, do is kind of a line through here. I'll draw a little, little harder so you can see it. 
It's not a perfectly straight line, but that's fine. So there is the top end of our neck. And then we want to draw a line down the side. And again, I'm going to just eyeball that line. You could use a ruler. Then it goes down to about there. And this line here that goes down is going to be parallel to that line. You know, everything in nature is really, you can break everything down into shapes. Some things are easier to see than others, like, uh, like man-made things, like buildings and refrigerators and stoves. They, are, they have nice, um, they meet at right angles and they have really perfect shapes. But you can also apply shapes to things like what we're doing here today. Everything can be broken down into shapes of some sort or other. And of course, we all know our shapes. We've got our, our basic circles, ovals, uh, rectangles, triangles, tetrahedrons, anything that you have known as a shape. It just makes it that much easier to uh, create your, your foundation for your animal. I'm a big fan of using this as a way of getting started with my animals. I didn't, I didn't used to, but I, I recently discovered just how, how helpful it can be to get, to get your initial shape really figured out. So this bottom line here, this one isn't as important, but I'll put it in anyway, because this is kind of where our, our portrait peters out a little bit here. But I will put that in here. Again, this line here is going to be parallel to that line there. So let's just draw a little line down here. There. Okay, so there we have our basic composite shapes of our polar bear. I'm just gonna put that here and get to take a closer look. Are there any comments? Does anybody have, am I going too fast? Do let me know if I am. All good. And I just drew a line here with the edge of my, that was the tail end of my pencil as I was going like this. So we're all, we're all doing well. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go from this image to this image. So now we can get, get a sense of where, where the polar bear resides outside of our composite shapes. So the composite shapes pretty much encapsulate the bear for most of it except down here and then in that neck area here you can if you have if you've printed this out you can draw right on it then we're going to see that that neck comes down here in our uh inside our shape so the 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 shape that is kind of the the um the vagus is that that uh, rectangle that we've drawn here that square but uh, we can now that we know where the bear sits inside that square, we can go ahead and draw that. So we're going to go around the outside of our bear, almost like a, imagine like you're a, an ant or something crawling along the, the outer edges of your creature. We're going to go in and sort of draw around it. I'm going to draw that area around our bear, and it goes it follows very closely to our composite shapes. You'll notice a little bit of that nose comes out the side. It go, falls outside our composite shape, and then down the side here. So let's do that on our actual drawing. I'm gonna put this all around the side. I'm gonna start down here. I'd like to, I like to generally kind of go in a clockwise position. You, you can do the same, or you can go the other way around if you like, but I do tend to like to go in this direction. That's my, my, personal, um, in, my personal preference. Now, as we're drawing these lines, and these are lines that are going to stay, we're not going to be erasing these lines. So we're, these are the guidelines, the scaffolding, if you like. We're now going to go in and draw the exterior, the outside form, the outside shape of our actual animal. The guidelines are going to help us understand where that outside is. So I'm going to start drawing up here. And we know that the bear's fur is, is furry. It's got some texture to it. So you don't have to draw a straight line. You can draw sort of a furry line. And that's going to help us when it comes time to drawing some fur, understand where that the furriness is. It goes a little bit outside the edges here and it goes around the edge of our, our ear. Just a smidge of that ear sticks out the top, just a little bit, and it goes down here. And you can take a look at the outer edge of that oval and start drawing very lightly. Well, no, actually, no, I'm pressing hard. You don't, I thought not lightly here. I'm gonna press a little more hard here. I'm just gonna go around the edges where I know that's the top fur of the head. I'm gonna press a little bit harder. And then it gets the fur around this area here, gets, is, it gets quite short. 
It's like, a, imagine like with your cat or your dog, the fur on the top of the of your creature's uh, nose or snout is very short here. So it, it appears to be smoother. So you're not gonna have that jaggedy texture on the top of your nose. It'll be a little smoother. So I'm gonna draw a straight line to indicate that it's smooth, straighter line coming down in here. And now let's take a look at that nose. So this is like very much like a, a dog nose or a cat nose. You've got that lower, um, you've got that, um, that flare here where the nair is or the nostril is, and it's inside that circle that we've drawn. And it is actually a, a little bit above the X axis here. So let's try and draw our nair in here, our nostril. I'm gonna just draw a very, very gently here. And we're now looking at what we call the negative space. We're going to consider negative space here. So what I mean by negative space is, where isn't there, inside this space here, where is there no bear? Where is there not any polar bear? So that's what I mean by negative space here. This area here, and I'll just highlight it here for you, this area here has no bear in it. I'm gonna erase that now because I can't see it. But this area here has no bear in it. That's kind of negative space. So negative space can be as useful as regular, as the, the, the space that is filled by our, our, our subject. It can be very helpful in understanding how the things are positioned. So that nair comes out the side here and the, the bottom of the nair, the nose, comes down to about here. I made it a little bit too close to my edge here, and I'm going to erase this. I've got this lovely little skinny eraser. That's a, a Tombow eraser, which I really like for, for tight little spaces like this. And I'm going to go in and remove that one line I did, which I, I didn't, uh, I made it a little bit too large. We did just have one comment that's uh, a little quick, so. Yes. We can just if we can just slow down just, just sure right there. absolutely okay perfect so I'll just go over this again when you're when you're working on your um, filling out the the form here and remember just consider think about yourself as being like a little creature like a little ant or something crawling along the exterior the shape of your polar bear you can do some jaggedy lines here because we do know that that the fur along the back of our polar bear's neck is going to be quite long and then come up over the edges here. You'll see there's a little bit of fur that comes out, just a little bit that comes over the top of that ear and then the top of the head. And you can do some jaggedy lines here that indicates, that tells us that there is, that's just some texture there. Then you can almost, remember that one um, uh, uh, Robert Bateman painting I showed you with the, the, the portrait of the polar bear and the fur. You can see he's created in such a way, he's created essentially an optical illusion that he has made it appear like it really is fur, but of course it's, it's on a two-dimensional surface. So using color and line and value, he's able to make it appear as though it really is a three-dimensional object. So that is one of the tricks that you will be using in today's session to make it appear real is to give it a little bit of a texture by, by jaggeding your line. Make, jaggeding your line, is that a word? Making jaggedy lines here. So that is what the, the uh, fur would look like. And remember, we don't have to have each piece of fur exactly as it appears. That would be absolutely impossible. But we just give it, a, give it some texture here, knowing we know that all these little bits of fur, these little pieces of fur, are fairly short. They're not terribly long on the top of the bear's head. So we're going to just draw short little jaggedy marks along the top. So I'm going to carry on moving down here, down his snout, and I just did the edge of that nair, that nostril. Taking a look at my image here, at my guideline here, it comes down and I see that the edge of that nose comes down to right about here. And again, I've gone a little bit too far out and I'm going to use my skinny eraser to erase that. So take your time getting that nose in just the right position. And I've got my, it comes down to just above, just above the, uh, the circle here. So I want to do it right to about here. And I am taking my time here, as you can see. I'm getting lots of lines here, and I'm er erasing those that I don't need at the moment. 
and I think that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that, that nostril coming out here. We're going to go back in later, after we've done our, our, our encircled our bear with his shape, with his form. We'll go back in later and do some more of the detail, like getting that nostril in, getting the eye in, some of those little details. So I'm going to carry on down the side of his nose here, and we have that, like that, that mouth here. That's there. Here's the upper lip, just at the bottom of our our, our nose circle, the little circle that encompasses the nose. Just beyond that, we have a little bit of a lip coming down here, and we're going to. You could even draw a little line here. And as I say, we will go in later and add the mouth just to give us a sense of. Um, you know, to make it look more real. We'll put the mouth in later, but I wanted to get the, the form in here. So I've done a little bit of kind of a, kind of a dip down in here, a little, a little scoop, and that tells me that there's some, a shape there. That's the lower, the upper lip, and the lower lip comes in here. And again, we follow quite closely along the shape of the, the, the oval that is already there. So you can see how helpful how helpful these shapes are, these structural shapes that give us the give us a sense of where the where the bear is and where the bear isn't. So I've got some of his neck here. Again, we've got some negative space in here. There is where the negative space where the bear is, but the composite shapes are not. That's another type of negative space. The shapes do not encompass any of this piece in here. So that is, we know that we want sort of a triangular piece in here to cover off that little bit of his, his right under his chin. Now that line, this is a bit more free, free form here. You can do what you like for your line here. We do know that it's going to come down in this area here. And notice how I'm giving a little bit of jaggedy lines here to indicate that there's fur there. So there we have the, the basic outline of our polar bear. We could, if we wanted to, erase some of our guidelines. However, we do want to keep these ones in. We want to get the nose and the mouth and the eye positioned before we do any erasing. So I'm going to suggest we leave these, these, uh, uh, these guidelines in for the time being. We're going to go in now and take a look at where his eye is. Now, is everybody doing okay? Are there any comments, any, any worries? Okay. I'm going to sharpen my pencil while we're at it. I am using a 4B pencil. I, the reason I chose the 4B was because I wanted to make it make sure it was dark enough for everyone on camera to see. So uh, I think we were probably asked to have a, um, uh, an HB pencil, but um, I, as I say, the reason I'm choosing this one is because it's a little bit stronger. It's a little bit blacker bolder than the HB. Okay, now let's take a look at that eye. The polar bear's eyes are quite small. Apparently he's got extremely good vision, however, but the eye, let's take a look at where it is on the, right on the composite shape. You could actually draw a little circle. We could have if you'd wanted to, you, and the composite shapes, and let me just interrupt myself here. The composite shapes, these are my choice. This is what I thought would make the most effective breakdown of my bear, but you, you might have thought, well, no, I think this should have been a square, or I think his head should have been a rectangle. These are totally your call. This is what I chose for for my purposes, and this is what I'm sharing with you. But you could certainly have um, created different shapes for your for your structure, um, and you could have, we could have put a small circle in here for the eye. However, we're we're working on it now, so it's uh, it's about the same. It works out to the same thing. So here's the eye here. It's just, it's quite small, and it's to the right of our y-axis. Again, if we hadn't had that, the x and the y-axis, she might have thought it was well over here. But it isn't, it's over in this area here. So let's get a, just a little kind of an almond shape in here. Just a little, I'll draw a little bit heavier here. And it isn't completely round, it's a bit more almond shaped. Let's draw something like that. Now, around the edges of your eye, of your polar bear's eye, 
it's quite black. You, that, and you can see an indicator of the black skin. The, the, the black skin of the, the eyelids and the, and the skin is, is showing through here. So the area around the eye, and this lead is about to break, I'm going to move on to a different pencil. The area around the eye is really black, really dark. Now the area inside the eye is a little bit lighter. If you take a close look at the eye in here, you'll notice you can see the pupil. And I'm just going to draw that pupil in here. And it's smaller, of course, than the, the, um, the circle that we've drawn or the almond shape we've drawn. And I'm going to go draw in that pupil. And I don't know if you can see, we can't get too tight on this camera. But I have left just a teeny tiny little white dot in there. So that tiny little white dot is just um, a, a way of telling the viewer that it is uh, it is damp, that it's moist, that the eyeball is moist, and then it's curved. So it's a little bit of a reflection. So if you look at anybody's eyes, an animal's eyes, your own eyes, you'll see you'll often see white dots in them uh, that where where the light is glancing off. So that's what I have, I've left just a little bit there. If you can do that, that's great. If not, really don't worry about it. Now the area of the eye itself, it's a, I'm just gonna use the side of my pencil. See how I'm shading with the side of it here? I'm just gonna uh, shade in a little bit. It's not going to be as dark as the area around the eye because if you look at that, your reference image here, it's not as dark as the the eyelid around the eye. So, and in fact, I'm just going to go in and darken in that eyelid so it's clear to me that that area here that's a little bit lighter is actually the eyeball. You can work on that as well. Okay, so there we have the eye of our bear and it's looking very good. I'm quite happy with it so far. Let's go over and look at the mouth. The mouth down here, I started it when we started that lip hanging down here, just coming outside slightly from our, um, our series of ovals. That mouth is going to come down and if we take a look at where it sits in this oval, look at that. We've got sort of a curly, curly line here, nice curvy line, a little bit of a smile there on him. So we're going to do, we want to create that shape inside, inside the oval here. Now see how I did that? I, I, I looked at my reference image. And I drew over it a few times. It's always handy to have a reference image that you can draw on because it just it can kind of warm you up a little bit, get you get you doing the, the lines a little more um, casually, a little more relaxedly. So I'm just drawing a nice kind of a scoop here, and then with that with that motion still fresh in my mind and fresh in my hand, I'm kind of doing a similar motion here. I'm just giving a little bit of a shape there. There. I'm quite happy with that. That looks good. So if you can draw yourself a little kind of a curved line in here for the mouth, keeping within, you look where it sits on that lower half of the oval. It's down towards the bottom. It's not right in the middle. It's down lower. It's down in this area here. If you look at this shape here, you'll see where it sits, where, where it resides in this half of the oval. So there is my mouth. I'm quite happy with it. Taking a closer look at our nose now. I'm just going to move on up to the nose. We've got that nair, that nostril. And then it is tricky to see in this image, but we have some dark area here. We're going to shade in this area here. And if you, just backing up for a second here, if you look at your bear, if you kind of squint at it, you'll see where the darkest parts are. And like the very darkest part of the bear in front of you is the nose. This area here, the muzzle, the snout, the nose, this area here. So you don't have to worry too much about getting the exact shape of the, the nostril. We need to worry more about where it is darkest. So again, I'm going to use the side of my pencil and I'm going to go in and I'm going to sort of lay down, we call it laying down graphite. I'm going to lay down some shading here. And you can see that shading goes right down to the bottom of the circle that encompasses the, the nose. It goes right down in there. And there's a little, there's some white in this area here. And that is where there's light reflecting off the bear's nose. The bear's nose is black, black, black. 
but this area here is not there's there's no white on his nose but what you're seeing is the reflection of light bouncing off the black of his nose so what we want to capture here is a little bit of the reflection coming off his nose so we'll do a little bit of um, shade around that area if you wanted to we could draw a little line here to tell you where you want that white patch to live right about there and we're going to shade around it his nose is definitely tricky but you can get it it doesn't have to be perfect of course by a long shot so i've got some darkness down here and it will be even darker so i'm going to press even a little bit harder down in this area here a little bit darker and we can actually move from the nose down into the mouth area because you'll notice that the mouth area that whole area around his muzzle is quite dark so let's move down and we're shading here again and you'll notice this is also where the the bears um, whiskers and things stick out and you'll know the same with your own cat or your dog you'll have those those uh, those whisker lot the little whiter lighter dots those will be hard to get to to um, replicate but you can get a sense of the um, of how the the dark sort of goes from quite dark to lighter as it moves away from the snout so you can use your pencil you can also use your finger if you like to give it a little bit of a move it along a bit sure smooth out a bit that area has got short furs on it so that it will be it will appear to be quite smooth you see how I've done that and that's given it a nice feel to it it's given a nice sort of a snout feel you know, it's a little bit darker in here. If you wanted to, you could go in and make a couple of little dots with the tip of your pencil. And that will sort of indicate that there might be whisker marks there. So that's looking quite nice. I'm going to go down in here and look at that mouth. I'm gonna darken up the mouth. Again, squinting at your reference photo. Squinting at that, you see that the mouth is really dark too. So I'm gonna darken up this area both with the tip of my pencil and the side of it. I'm going to darken that up a bit so it's a little more um, noticeable. It's a little more, uh, it's got more value, got greater contrasting. So there's nice, that's nice. So I'm quite happy so far with my nose. The nose is not too, um, too detailed because it is more of an abstract view of the nose that we have. But let's go in, now that we've got the major features in, we've got the, the nose, the mouth, and the eye, let's go in and remove those guidelines and we'll start getting a, a better sense of what's going on with our bear here and getting a, a, a look at his personality. Okay, so I'm going to remove these. And how's everyone doing? Any questions? Um, there is, let me see. Um, Hyman just made a comment that he free draws owls. Oh, good. Uh, we also had Karen, who's joining us from Queensland, Australia. And I know a few people were asking about this reference image, uh, the polar bear. So we're going to be emailing Karen a copy now. But if you registered for the event, the, uh, the reference image should have uh, been attached to that original email. So if it's something that you want to download a copy of or use in your free time, it will be in that initial email. Yeah. Yeah, using a reference image is really, really important. Um, it's pretty hard to uh, capture things uh, without some sort of sense of, you know, what the reality of our creature is. Oh, he's starting to look really good. Look at that. Looking really good. Um, and I'm just, see how I removed all those lines? I'm going to get rid of the ear line now too, because I think, I don't think we're going to need that any longer. I have done that before where I've got all my guidelines and then I started erasing them and I think, oh, actually I still needed that. But you can, that's something you can figure out on your own when you're, when, if you carry on using this kind of a, a, a format is how long do you keep your, your uh, guidelines in. So for the really tight spots in here, again, I'm using my skinny eraser. You can use your regular eraser. You could sharpen it with a, um, with a, like a box cutter. So parents, if you're, your kids are wanting this, please do it for them because of course it can be quite quite tricky to get it. But you can you can create a nice sharp tip on your regular uh, plastic, your vinyl eraser, um, 
that's, that's good enough to get in here and move, remove the really tight little corners. This is also a really nice, um, a really nice choice. I'm, I'm quite happy with this Tombow. So I'm going in, I'm just getting some of those, my guidelines are removing, I'm removing them, going up near the top of my head, getting some of those out of the way here. And in here, I don't think we need these any longer either. I'm gonna get rid of some of these. And you can see now, like, oh yeah, I shouldn't have pressed too hard. Val was right, right? <laughs> you wanna make sure that you can erase, lift out those scaffolding lines so it looks, so it looks nice. Okay, so I've got my, and you will probably be able to see your scaffolding lines a little bit, which can still be helpful because we want to do some shading now. Oops, right at the very end of my nose, that's what I need. We want to do some shading and they will still help guide us. And I can see now that my nair, that nostril should be a little bit lower down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just change that. You can certainly, you can always make changes as you're going, of course. Nothing is carved in stone. I'm making that one nostril a little bit darker. There, he looks pretty good. I'm gonna outline him a little bit more out here. So I'm quite happy with that. Now we've noticed when you take a look at the, the bear itself, it is, um, it's got light shining on it. It's coming down from up here. It's coming down from up here. So a lot of it is, you know, the bear is white. But a part of it, it looks like it's dark in some areas. Now that is because of the, the tones, the values that, that is, is, uh, uh, the shadows are casting on the bear's fur. So using the side of your pencil, we can go in and start adding some of those, those values to our fur. So we know that there's a kind of a white patch on top of his head here. Look at there, that's where the, there's some light shining on there. So I'm gonna go draw in just a little marker here where I know it will be uh, it'll be lighter. I'm going to leave that area white, the color of my sketch pad, and I want to start going in. Oopsie, I want to use that instead of my hand. I'm going to start adding in some shading with my my with my pencil, the side of my pencil. So when I'm shading, I'm also cognizant. I really want to make sure that I go in the direction or try to anyway, go in the direction of my polar bear's fur, the way that it's growing. You'll find that when you do any sort of uh, shading of fur or, or hair, it is always better to try to go, and it's not always possible, to try to go in the direction of the fur that it's growing. So if I were doing, uh, I, I wouldn't want to do uh, shading like this on my polar bear. I would try to go in the direction that that fur appears to be growing. That helps create the, the illusion of, of fur. So I'm just going around where I see darker areas on my, my um, bear, like around that eye. The eye would be a little bit sunken, a little, little deeper set than the um, rest of the eye. And then there's a brow that tells us that there's a bit of an eyebrow here or a brow on the head. And then around the eye here. And there's, a, again, where that nose, the, the snout, sticks out. There's a, there's a little bit of um, a, a depression there. So you'll notice that where, wherever it's darkest, wherever it's darkest, like that nostril in this area here, that is the, the deepest part. It's, it's quite deep. It, it's, it's, a, it's further away from us, the viewer, than it is than, than a, a top area here that's being hit by light, that's being exposed to the light. So I'm going to carry on doing some more shading here down the side of his nose. Again, I'm going to try to go in the direction of the fur. It's not always possible, especially if you're in a, in a sort of a tight area on your, on your creature. And I'm going down. You can just imagine how that fur would grow. Again, I always think about my dog or our cat, how that fur would grow down the side here. And then around that the muzzle here, it's a little bit darker even. We can go in and darken that. Again, we used our finger for that. You can do that again. One thing I really love about working with, with pencil is you can lay down graphite and you can remove it. You can lay it down and you can remove it. So it's a really wonderful uh, pairing, a really nice dance between, between the two. If I put down too much, I can go in and lift some off. I'm just doing some very gentle lines here. And we're, this is, 
what I'm doing here is the way that you would try, start creating the appearance of fur. So that is why I've suggested that you try to shade in the direction of your creature's fur, which is what I'm doing here. Underneath here, again, I've left that quite light because that's where the light is bouncing off. Oh, you know what? We haven't paid attention to his ear yet. Let's just back up for a second and go and take a look at his ear. Again, if you look at that ear, the very deepest part of it is, is the darkest part. You notice that? So it's going to be in this area here. I'm just going to give myself a little bit, another little guideline. This area here is going to be quite dark and I'm quite, yeah, that looks about right. So I'm going to lay down some graphite here, my pencil with my graphite. And again, I'm going to try to go in the direction of the fur. Again, this, it's, a, it's tricky uh, to try to always do that. You know, you, your, your arm might get twisted in a funny angle here. So I'm going to try to um, create that appearance of fur going in that direction by pushing my pencil rather than, than dragging it. So I'm just laying down some graphite here. And notice that the edges of your ear, they're, they're light, aren't they? So that tells us, tells us a couple of things. It tells us that the ear is thicker, it's a little bit thicker, and the light is glancing off the top of the ear. And because there's a quite a wide band where the light is glancing off, that tells us that it's, that's, that's thicker, that that ear is, is not thin, like paper thin. Um, it is, it's covering quite a large area. It's reflecting off a large area of flesh. So try to keep that area here, try to keep that a little bit lighter. Now I notice that the very darkest part of his ear is in here. And again, trying to go in the direction of your fur. And there's a little bit of area darkness around the ear. I'm actually going to go in now with the tip of my pencil. We haven't got too much time left, so I wanted to show you the, the other thing that you can do with your pencil when you're, when you're creating the appearance of fur, is we've laid down that graphite, as you've seen here, with the side of my pencil. You can also go in with the tip of your pencil and start drawing just little lines here. And that tells us that there's fur. There's individual strands of fur. You don't have to get them all. You, don't, you can't get them all, there's no way. But you can draw some in here. And you may not be able to see that clearly on mine, but on your own, you'll notice that it gives the, the appearance of, of reality. It really looks more real than um, than no shading at all, or even then, then with just the graphite, that initial graphite um, layering here. Okay, I'm gonna do a few more lines in here. Again, I'm laying down this layer of graphite, which is super helpful. And I'm keeping my eye on my image and on the reference image about, I'm gonna say about when at this point, I'm going to say mostly, mostly on the reference image. I'm about 60% of my time, I'm looking at this, and I'm just moving slowly with my pencil. Okay. And I'm just moving around, looking at where there are darker spots on my bear here. And as you're moving along, you decide, yeah, I think this should be a little bit darker. I think this should be a little bit lighter. I think this should be a little bit darker. So it depends on... Um, how much time you want to put into it. And I'm going to use that tip of my pencil just to give a few suggestions of a few strands of fur here. And I think I've, I should not have this white area in here. I'm going to darken that in. Darken that in a little bit. There's really very little white right around the eye. There's a tiny bit right above the eye, just a right directly above it. I don't know if you can see it. It's really tiny. It's going to remove a little bit. Move a little bit. So he's looking quite good. I'm quite happy with him. Now we are coming close to the end of our hour. We have another three minutes. So I'm gonna keep on drawing for a few more minutes. Um, if you have any questions, do let me know. I just wanted to let you know that, um, as I say, this is like a, uh, a preview of what we're doing. This is a preview of what we're doing. Um, and we have, um, our exploring the Arctic theme is what we're doing for the month of January. And I mentioned we're doing those animals, the reindeer, the Arctic fox, the, um, and the polar bear again. So we will, I really thank you all for turning in here today. 
tuning in here to see us today. And if you're interested in joining us for Exploring the Arctic, we have both a junior, like for kids, junior online class, and we have an adult online class. And we also have a Nature Sketch Cafe. For those of you who are interested in, it's like a really relaxing, kind of a casual gathering of, um, you know, just getting together, maybe have a drink beside you, a cup of tea or something, and doing some really relaxed uh, sketching with us. So if you're interested in any of those options, we do have them up on our website at uh, www.batemanfoundation.org, uh, and then click on the Learn button. So we are going to be carrying on with our nature sketch right into 2022. I can't believe we're hitting 2022 already. But I would like to thank you all so much for tuning in today. And we here at the Bateman Foundation are really, we really believe in fostering connections to nature. Um, so we run the Bateman Gallery, this nature sketch program that you've just been with us here today. We've got wellness programs and we do partner with lots of other art and nature literacy initiatives that to help sort of forge these connections. Um, we do like to encourage people to see nature through a, a personal, through an intimate connection. And we're really, really thankful for each one of you joining us here today. So if you have any questions, feel free to chime in on our chat. We're going to be doing another one on, I think it's January the 16th. Does that sound right guys, Duncan and Jeff? Yeah. Our next one is on January the 16th and we're going to be doing it at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So two hours later than this one. And the theme for that one, the theme for that month is going to be Masters of Disguise. And the animal that we're going to be taking a close look at is the tree frog. I have never drawn a tree frog before, so I thought that would be really cool. And it's, uh, again, it's one of these, it's an animal that can disguise itself, it can camouflage itself. So if you want to have the camera on me for the last few seconds, or are we all done? It, it's been on you for a while, I think. Like, oh, has it? Um, okay. Yeah. I we'll, didn't know that. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll open it to the floor, so I know that a few questions have okay. come in to chat. Um, let me see. Marina was asking, will we draw the whole bear? Yes. Next class? Excellent question. We're going to draw the entire bear and we have a number of examples. Um, I think we might have some up on our, uh, Duncan, do you know, do we have any of, of uh, online examples of, of uh, people's artwork that we've done of bears? We, we certainly, but we certainly will be doing the entire bear. This was just kind of a sample of the Arbor Polar Bear. Yeah. So if you go to the Bateman Foundation website, uh, under a nature sketch, we have a nature sketch gallery where any student that wants to submit their art from a class, we put it up there. Great. And so if anyone has any polar bears, that's where they will be found. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure there are a number. Yeah. yeah. I see Duncan's just uh, put a link into the chat as well uh, for registration. Uh, kind of from behind the scenes, thank you everyone who's joined us today live. Um, as Val mentioned, we're going to offer these every month. Um, thank you to all, uh, all of you in the chat who have subscribed to the account, uh, keep a lookout for content we'll be posting to this channel. So um, we'll definitely remind you through email, but also on our on our YouTube channel about Great. future events. And this is where we'll be keeping our content. So thanks Great. so much. Thanks everyone. Keep your pencil sharp, and we'll hope to see you next month.